Has the first ever detection of dark matter just been made? A recent study has found a halo of gamma ray radiation surrounding the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, which they weren't expecting to be there. The energy and shape of this radiation matches perfectly with the theoretical predictions for WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles, when they collide and annihilate with each other. Now, WIMPs are a key candidate for being the elusive dark matter. So does this mean that the mystery has finally been solved? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and in this week's video, let's talk about the excess gamma ray halo and dark matter. So dark matter is the elusive component of our universe. We think that it's there due to the gravitational influence that it has on, for example, how fast our galaxies are moving within galaxy clusters. But besides gravity, it doesn't interact much at all. It doesn't emit any irradiation, and we've never been able to detect it in our deep underground dark matter detectors, or even create it in particle colliders. The lack of electromagnetic interaction with ordinary matter is what makes it dark and incredibly challenging to detect directly. Despite this mystery, there are many theoretical candidates for what constitutes dark matter, each with different properties and implications for cosmology and particle physics. So for example, they could be axions, which are a hypothetical super light particle. They could be sterile neutrinos, which are not the usual three known neutrinos that we find in our standard model, but instead would be much, much heavier. They could be machos, which stands for massive compact halo objects, essentially non-particles like black holes, neutron stars, and brown dwarfs. But perhaps the most popular candidate are WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles. They get their name due to the fact that they only interact with normal matter through the weak force and gravity. Now, these particles are heavy. They're 100 to 1,000 times heavier than a proton. For reference, the heaviest known element is organoson with an atomic number of 118. So its mass is approximately 118 times the mass of a proton. So generally, it's much smaller than the hypothetical WIMP. Now, because WIMPs are so heavy, they move around slowly, and this means that they could be our cold dark matter. However, crucially, they are also their own antiparticles, and that means that when two WIMPs crash into each other in space, they would be annihilated, destroying each other and releasing a huge burst of energy, specifically gamma rays. Now, in search of this signal, Professor Tomonori Tatani from the University of Tokyo looked deep within the archives of NASA's Fermi Space Telescope. 15 whole years of gamma ray astronomy observations and centered around the galactic center. He meticulously modeled all of the components of sources that he expected to produce gamma ray radiation. So point source radiation from things like pulsars, AGN, so black holes, and supernova remnants. Diffuse interstellar emission from cosmic ray interactions produced when cosmic rays interact with the interstellar gas. The extragalactic gamma ray background from unresolved sources like distant AGN and known gamma ray structures like Loop 1 and the Fermi bubbles. So when he subtracted the expectation of all of these sources from what they actually see, he saw a halo of excess gamma radiation. This excess radiation perfectly matches the shape of the NFW profile. This is the shape typically used to model the density of dark matter halos. So when you subtract this halo, the excess radiation goes away. Now, gamma ray telescopes aren't mirrors like optical telescopes. Visible light bounces off mirrors, which is how standard telescopes work. But gamma rays are so energetic that they would punch right through any mirror. So instead of catching the light, the Fermi Space Telescope forces the light to transform into matter. 
It contains layers of tungsten foil, which when a high energy gamma ray hits an atom in that foil, it vanishes. In its place becomes two particles that are instantly created, an electron and a positron, so matter and antimatter. This is Einstein's E equals MC squared in action, energy turning into mass. These two new particles then fly through the detector before crashing into cesium iodide crystal. This creates a chain reaction. One particle knocks into an atom, creating two more, which hit two more, and so on and so on. This creates a massive shower of secondary particles and flashes of light, what we call scintillation. The brighter the flash, the more energy that original gamma ray photon must have had. Now, interestingly, the new study found that this excess halo peaks at 20 giga electron volts of energy. And this is interesting because nature, so things like pulsars and black holes, they tend to produce gamma rays that are very messy. So they contain lots of different energies mixed together, not a single peak. On the other hand, dark matter annihilation is expected to be very precise. If WIMPs have a specific mass, then their explosion should produce gamma rays of a specific energy. A clean bump at 20 giga electron volts is exactly what we expect for a WIMP approximately 500 times heavier than a proton. Now, this finding has high statistical significance, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. There are alternative explanations that haven't been 100% ruled out yet. And it's not the first time the physics community has seen dark matter signals from the galactic center. That time it turned out to be something else. For example, in the past, similar gamma ray excesses were later explained by populations of millisecond pulsars, so spinning dead stars. And those sources we just couldn't resolve individually. So to prove that this is dark matter, scientists need to see the exact same specific gamma ray signal coming from other places in the universe, rich in dark matter, but poor in stars, such as around dwarf spheroidal galaxies orbiting the Milky Way. Now, if we see the signal there, then it's almost certainly dark matter. But if we don't, it might just be a complex astrophysical phenomenon in our galactic center that we just don't know about yet. This also doesn't constitute to be a direct detection, which requires experimental evidence of dark matter particles interacting directly with ordinary matter. So these are things like what we're looking for within detectors located deep underground. This week, I'll be going off to the Bowlby Underground Laboratory in the UK to do just that. Anyway, that is all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. Hey space cats, fly with me to the sun.